Hi everybody, this is Lindsay from WindingRoadCrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable sword and shield. If you like this tutorial, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. So here we have the partially finished shield for my daughter and this project is actually really easy to work. It's just a series of repeats and it takes less than one skein of yarn but as you can see you're probably going to want to use more than one color. For this you're going to need scissors, worsted weight yarn, a size H crochet hook, and a yarn needle. For this project I am using one full skein, seven ounces of Red Heart Super Saver in the color Dusty Gray, and then a few other colors for accents. So we're going to grab our hooks and we are going to start on the sword. For the sword, you will start by chaining two. So yarn over, chain one, chain two. Now working into the second chain from the hook, we are going to work two single crochet into this chain. So one and number two. So after this, we are just going to work a repeat. So to start by chaining one, we are going to increase into the first stitch and then we're just going to work across. So one single crochet into the first stitch, two single crochets into the first stitch, and then work into the next single crochet, which in this case is just the one. All right, now we're going to chain one, flip over, and repeat this again. Again, the repeat is increase in the first stitch and single crochet across. So one, two stitches into the first stitch and then just single crochet into every stitch across. You are going to continue doing this until you have a total of 10 stitches when you finish a row. So here I am at the end of row nine and if I count across the top, I will have a total of 10 stitches. From here, we are going to do a repeat row again, really easy, chain one and single crochet into each stitch across. You'll continue doing even rows like this until you have a total of 41 rows. So when you reach the end of the row, you will just chain one again, turn, and single crochet in each stitch across. And just keep repeating that until you have 41 total rows. All right, so we've worked 41 total rows, and for now we are done with the gray. So we're actually going to clip our yarn and fasten off. So just complete your last stitch. At least that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to yarn over and pull that yarn tail all the way through. So now we're going to work on the hilt, which is going to be a different color. I am using blue for my son's sword. I'm going to make a slip knot and we're going to start a new chain. So here we're going to work across, but first we are going to chain five three, four, and five. Then directly from here, I'm going to begin working into the last row. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and complete my first single crochet. So now we will just single crochet in each stitch across. So once you reach the end of the row, we need to extend out the other side so it matches the first side, but this time we will chain six. We're chaining six because it's going to be five to extend and one as a turning chain. Turn your work. We will single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then we're going to single crochet into the next four chain. So there'll be five single crochets worked before we start working into the sword itself. And then again, you're just gonna work into the next 10 stitches across the top of this row. And once you reach the end, we'll just work five more single crochet into the last five chain. So 
So now you can see that we have the extended part for the hilt. So we're just going to chain one and turn and we're going to single crochet all the way across and we're going to repeat this until we have a total of 49 rows. All right, so now you can see I've completed my hilt, at least the extended part. I'm going to chain one and we are just going to move ourselves over a bit by working six slip stitches into the first six stitches. So just going down to the center of the stitch, I'm just going to work a simple slip stitch into these six stitches. So two, three, four, five, and six. That just gets us moved over. Now I will chain one and I will single crochet into the next eight stitches. Once I've worked those eight stitches, I am going to leave the last six stitches unworked. And from here, we're just gonna chain one again, turn our work, and single crochet into the next eight stitches. And we'll just repeat this row until we have a total of 59 rows. So we'll just keep working back and forth here until we complete the sword. So here you have it. We have finished up with our sword. I'm just gonna kill my thread and pull that last yarn in through my last loop. And then the next thing I'm going to do, just to add a little extra detail, is I'm going to surface slip stitch a row right down the center of the sword. To do this, you're just gonna push your yarn through the start of your line, yarn over and pull through your work. And then you're gonna hold your working yarn in your hand behind your project. I'm gonna skip two rows pull up a new loop from behind, pull it through the first loop on my hook. So to do that again, we're gonna push through our work on the back side. I'm going to yarn over, pull through the work, and pull through the loop on our hook. So just like a slip stitch, just being worked through a piece of crochet. And I'm gonna continue doing this all the way until I reach the hilt. So here I am all the way up to the hilt. I'm gonna clip my yarn. I'm gonna pull this last end all the way through. Grab my yarn needle, weave it in, and then just push it back through that stitch or the next stitch above it, whichever you prefer. From here, I can weave my end in on the back of my work. I'll do the same at the top of the slip stitch row. I'll weave in all my ends for this project. You will need to make a second sword and then we'll be ready to assemble the sword. So before we do any assembly, I like to assemble everything together. So let's go ahead and start on our shield. Our shield starts pretty similarly. We're going to chain three this time and we're going to work two single crochet into the second and into the third chain from the hook. So one, two single crochet into the first stitch and one, two single crochet into the second chain. They're chains, not stitches. All right, so here we're gonna start a three row repeat. For the first row, we are going to increase in the first stitch and single crochet across. Sounds familiar, it's what we did with our sword. So I work two single crochet in the first stitch and I'll single crochet into each of the next three stitches. All right, chain one and turn. For repeat row two, we are gonna do the same thing. Two single crochet or an increase in the first stitch and then single crochet in each stitch across. All right, let's do this one more time, chain one and turn, but this time for repeat row three, we are going to work an increase into the first stitch and into the last stitch. 
So we're increasing on both sides. So work a single crochet, another one into the first stitch, single crochet into each stitch across, and when you reach that last stitch you're going to work two single crochet into that last stitch. So one and two. So that is how you are going to do your repeats. You're going to repeat this several times. I like to use a stitch marker to mark my third repeat row and it just helps me keep track of where my repeats are. So now we're working repeat row one. We're going to chain one, single crochet into the first stitch, and single crochet across. Now we're working repeat row two, chain one, single crochet twice into the first stitch, so an increase in the first stitch, and single crochet in each row across. When you reach the end of that row, you see that we're on the same side as that stitch marker. So from here, you know you're working a repeat row three, so I will increase in the first stitch, I will work all the way across, and I will increase in the last stitch. So I've reached my last stitch. I'm going to work two single crochet into this stitch. And since I'm at the end of my repeat row three, this is when I'm going to take my stitch marker and I'll just move it to the new repeat row three to the end side of it. And now I'm ready to repeat those three rows again. You'll continue repeating these three rows until you have a total of 25 rows. So here I've worked 25 rows. Along my very top row, I have a total of 36 stitches. And now for the next row, I'm just going to chain one and I am going to single crochet into every stitch across. And I'm going to continue repeating that row until we have a total of 61 rows. So I finished row 26. I'm just gonna chain one turn and repeat that row by single crocheting and every stitch across. Once you reach the end of row 61, you're just going to fasten off, yarn over, and pull your yarn end through. And again, you will need to make two of these so that we can combine them together. But before we do, it's really fun to go ahead and decorate the front of your shield. What I've done to make decorating it easier is take a yarn and needle and I have embroidered with very long stitches the line that I am going to surface slip stitch around. So to surface slip stitch, it's going to be exactly like we did with the sword, just a little more complex because we are working a design. So we are going to yarn over on the back of our work pull up a loop and then what I'm using is this line here is kind of crossing over different holes in our work and that kind of tells me where I want to insert my hook. Be aware that you don't have to have even stitches all the way around. This is handmade and it looks beautiful any way you do it. I do recommend keeping your design a little on the simple side. So I just pulled up my next slip stitch. I'm following my line to decide where to insert my hook next, yarning over on the back side, pulling up a loop, pulling the loop on my hook over the new loop. I also like to make sure that I pull on these loops, make sure that they are long enough before I insert my hook into the work because when you pull through, you're not going to be able to pull on that first loop or this second loop on your hook, you're not going to be able to lengthen it. So you want to make sure it's long enough before you start go making your next stitch. As you can see, I have made it all the way around my star and now I'm just going to clip this pink here and slowly pull it out. And then I'll just weave in my ends. I am going to add a few other lines of color around the edge of this shield as well, but definitely do whatever you want. If you find this is difficult, another thing you can do is cut out a star or another shape out of felt and sew that directly onto it. That would be another cute way to decorate this shield. 
So we are almost ready to assemble, but we do have one more piece to make, and that is just an easy strap for the back of our shield so that we can wear it on our arm. To do this, we are going to chain nine, and then we're gonna single crochet into the second chain from the hook, and every chain across. So at the end of the row one, we are just going to chain one in turn, and then single crochet into every stitch across. And we will re continue repeating row two until we have a total of 28 rows. So it's just a simple strap for the back of our shield. So here is our strap. I have already fastened off. And then one thing to mention is I left myself a pretty long tail when I started and when I fastened off. And that is just for sewing to the back of our shield. This is the piece that we did not decorate. And I am just going to use a running stitch to sew this in place. I'm gonna go back and forth on both sides because if your kids like to play a lot, you are definitely going to want this to be really secure. And this is such a fun shield. It can be used like a toy. It could be used like a pillow because we are gonna stuff it pretty full. You could also use it as part of a Halloween costume. It's just very versatile. So now the strap is sewn in place. I woven my ends on the back side, which sides are gonna be on the inside of our project. And now we are all ready to start assembling our shield. So just place one layer on top of the other. I'll tell you a little secret. I didn't weave in all these ends. A lot of them I just tucked into the shield. Grab your crochet hook, and in my case, I grabbed an accent color. I grabbed a teal to crochet around the edge. So to join our work, you're just gonna take your two pieces. As I said, I'm tucking in most of my ends. You're gonna find a corner, make a slip knot, and insert your yarn on your hook. Find that corner and insert your hook through the corner of both pieces of crochet, both sides of your shield. And we're just gonna start making single crochets. So just like you were single crocheting another row, but we're single crocheting into both pieces of the shield, single crocheting them together. This is a beautiful way to create a nice, clean edge to a project like this. So I'm just gonna work through every stitch all the way down the top of my shield. When you reach the corner, you are going to chain one and then work into the sides of the rows this time. So working into the side of both layers of rows, we are going to work down the side of our shield. Sometimes it's a little tricky working through it, but the more you work on it, the easier it becomes. When you reach the bottom of the shield, we are not going to chain. Instead, we're just gonna work into the opposite side of those chain two starting chain that we worked. And that is gonna be enough to get us around this corner here. So working back into the side of the rows, after working into the bottom of the rows, and we've already worked ourselves around that corner. And again, you're just going to continue up the other side of the shield. So here we are with just a few inches left. I stopped working around my project and I am just going to stuff up this really, really full because my son is having nightmares and this is his shield pillow and shield sword to help fend off the bad dreams. So stuff it and then we'll be ready to finish up. So once your project is completely full, you'll just work the rest of the rows it might get a little tougher right now depending on how much you stuffed it, but you'll do, still be able to get through the sides of those stitches. When you reach that last corner, we're just gonna chain one because we're at that 90 degree corner and we are going to slip stitch to the very first stitch. Now you can fasten off. And if you tucked in all your ends while you did this, you should only have two yarn ends to weave in, and then your shield is done.
So for the sword, you're gonna join it in the exact same way. But what I like to do is I like to start here with gray, work all the way up. When you get to the top corner, you will chain one and turn yourself to work all the way down. When you reach here, you're gonna change to blue. And then all these outward corners, not this inner corner, we're not gonna do anything special there, but these outward corners here, we're gonna chain one. And then the top two corners will chain one. You'll work all the way around with blue and fasten off just like we did with the shield. So I really hope you enjoyed this pattern. It is a really fun pattern to make as a pillow, as a toy, or even as part of a Halloween or cosplay costume. And thank you so much for watching the tutorials.